Now, the thing about so-called birth of b-boy culture is we're talking about DJs in the parks. We're talking about the DJ's relationship with the dancers and the relationship with the audience and, and how they responded to the audience. And we could talk about Herc, or, and, and, and if you're coming to me, I'm going to talk about Grandmaster Flowers. But that's not to say Florida wasn't doing it too. F Florida had it. Uh, back as uh, far as 1979, which granted uh, is a couple years after Herc or, or even after Flash, we could talk about those who contemporized Miami music. Now, there were DJs spawning, spanning years, spanning, spanning decades, but the one that matters to me to start this thing, the ones that matter to me to start this Miami sound were FL DJs who were, who were there in 1979, Jam Pony Express in 1980, ghetto style DJs, Baby Said, Marvelous JP, Amazing Chico, Luke Skywalker, these were great DJs who, who, who threw great parties, uh, party down DJs, Space Funk, uh, maybe most notably CM Express, Chris and Mark. Why were these DJs special? Why are they notable? Because if Grandmaster Flowers was notable for his Richard Long sound system, these DJs were notable for Mr. Hanks sound systems. Mr. Hanks, again, if Jeep Harner developed the perfect boards for Criteria Studios to make Criteria the greatest studio in the world, ultimately leading to the most records in the top 10 in the world in 1978. Mr. Hanks, same thing. The biggest, best sound systems there were, period. So when 1981 rolled around and these DJs upgraded their systems to Mr. Hanks, the, the world changes. The sound becomes king. What was a good DJ? Well, you better know your music. You better know your records. You, you, you better know how to mix and have your equipment. That's just to enter the competition. What wins the competition? Your system. Your sound system. And if you had a Mr. Hanks, and he had a Mr. Hanks, who spent more money on Mr. Hanks? Who had a better relationship with Mr. Hanks? These are the DJs that win. These park competitions in Liberty City were the heart and soul of Miami music in the, in the early 80s when, when TK Disco was dead, when Criteria had sold. This was the Miami music scene. They played the electro records. People in South Florida love an up-tempo record. And the same way they do in Detroit or Brazil or, or Germany. It's always been the case. And it's always been the case here and it still is the case here. So if you play a 120, 130 BPM record in a Mr. Hank sound system in an open park, and you had the biggest Mr. Hank sound system, you win. Period. We Down Express. These DJs were the great ones. CS Express. Because they knew what they were doing before they got there. And then it comes down to a question of systems. Now, for one specific DJ, life changed. And that's Pretty Tony Butler because ultimately Pretty Tony Butler got an opportunity. He had a financier, a patron, if you will. A patron. Sherman Neely was uh, the patron of Pretty Tony Butler. Now a lot of people have seen Sherman's name on a lot of records and, and they say, what is it Sherman did? What, what, how does Sherman make the music? Sherman wasn't a music maker. Sherman wasn't a music maker. Sherman was a financier. And you have to ask yourself what that means. Well, he, he certainly provided money. He certainly provided uh, more than money. Um, it's been documented. Sherman Neely at one point worked for Rick Brownlee. So we're talking about a very serious issue here. And Pretty Tony was a music maker. Uh, Alan Johnston was a record promoter. Worked for Arista. Partnered with Nick Salerno, another another music promoter. And they knew how to work a record. So now it comes down to how to make a record. So uh, some aid was brought in. Calvin Mills, great musician, Calvin Mills. And they started making records. Summer Delight, Christmas Rock, 
Freestyle Express. These three records were uh, Calvin Mills and, and, and Pretty Tony Butler. Alan Johnston was, was an industry veteran. Not a part DJ, not an employee of Rick Brownlee, but an industry veteran. He worked records. So he set up an infrastructure for these guys, at least according to his words. And you have to wonder why wouldn't you believe that, considering that he worked for Arista Records. He understood the industry. He understood what it meant to work a record. However, before, uh, before the record was released, according to Alan Johnston, there was a meeting held, and Alan Johnston found his desk out in the street. John Johnston, the music specialist, was no longer a member or representative of music specialists and jam-packed records. Sherman Neely and Pretty Tony were. And after three records, Freestyle Express, Summer Delight, Christmas Rock, Calvin Mills was no longer a member of the, of the family. And you have to ask yourself why. You have to ask yourself why. We, we all wonder. We all, we all, we all come to conclusions. But they recruited more people there, between Sherman and, and Pretty Tony. Um, Debbie Deb, she worked at a, a record store. Singer, uh, Trenier. Um famously, Pretty Tony's um, significant other for a good period of time. To 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 quote him, my baby mama. Uh, Byron and Garfield, who uh, represented the group Freestyle. Uh, T.K. Rodriguez did a record with them. All this new talent with the backing of a good financier, a very good financier, hit huge. And if Casey and the Sunshine Band were working off of Henry Stone money, which was an industry standard since 1948, Pretty Tony was hitting with these groups and money that was um, new to the circuit. So you have to praise them. You have to say they um, they figured out an angle that maybe wasn't figured out beforehand. 